Hi guys and welcome to my channel Weird is the New Black. My name is Kat and this is a shadow reading and I have to preempt this reading. My guide is telling me that I have to preempt this reading by saying um, the shadow is not what you think it is 90% of the time and to view the shadow is that which you cannot see clearly. Um, Instead of vilifying the shadow as the bad bits or the evil bits or the not good bits, um, because what he's saying here is actually um, the shadow can have real hidden gifts attached to it. And for those of you that do shadow work anyway, I know that I'm telling you stuff you already know, so please bear with me. Um, but also that if you judge the shadow you are feeding the wrong kind of energy associated with it you are more likely to be taken over by a shadow um, the second that you think that um, it's something you don't need to look at so the point of the shadow is it's that which you cannot see clearly and do not judge the shadow um, because the judgment of the shadow feeds the shadow so um, if you are triggered at any stage, which I'm, I'm not feeling that so strongly, but if you are, um, use it as a gift is what he's saying, like be gifted with this energy um, because it's intended that only the shadow can like back you up against the wall and say to you, you know, this is me, rawr. Um, and it's, it's the, you can't do this otherwise. You need the shadow to confront and to be able to see things and deal with things and unlock secret chambers in the self. So, yeah, so now we're going to show you um, four items um, to choose from. And as ever, I would say take your time in choosing these items. So the first one we've got is the Hello Stone. Hello. The second one we've got is the Pine Cone. Beautiful. Third one, the beautiful dipped candles. And the fourth one is the bell. So take time and consider which one of those that you want to select. And as ever, I will see you on the other side. Say hi, Marilyn. Hi. <laughs> see you on the other side. Hello my lovelies, let me just move the microphone, just make sure that's a little bit closer here. This is for you that chose the Hello Stone. Hello! Found this on a walk with a friend. Had to keep it, obviously. It's a bit of a thing around here that people um, paint stones. This one um, is Bristol Rocks UK. <laughs> How cool is that? Where people paint rocks and they just leave them in places for other people to find and encourage them also to paint rocks and leave them for other people to find. How nice is that? Anyway, <laughs> this is a shadow read. I will be shuffling in some cards, um, as I mentioned in the intro. Um, and But I'm already getting a strong download um, with this one. And what I'm seeing up here is a young energy. Um, so this aspect is aged, I'd say, between 7 and 11 at the outset. More like eight to ten, <laughs> just being, just to clarify. But um, it's in a half. That's what I can see. I can see lots of folded arm energy and kind of like throwing oneself into a sofa and being like, <sighs> like it, like in a half. Um, and that's what's coming through with this frequency. That there's there's something um, that this frequency, this aspect, is unhappy about here. So my guide is going over to this aspect and he's he's gonna yeah he's asking this aspect is there anything that i can do for you and the aspects just responded by saying i don't know so there's an energy coming across here of not knowing what's needed and what's coming through for me here is like a eight of cups frequency but it feels like a something missing there is something profound missing here it feels like this there's a sense of something very much missing and either the either this aspect doesn't quite know what it is that, that is missing although they know that there's something profound missing um or there is a genuine absence here and it could be um a, a parental energy that ha is not around or yeah that is absent or it is not invested or there is a sense of feeling 
that something's missing. And, and with the thing with this aspect is because of the youth of the energy that's coming across here, it's, it's almost like it's trying to work out the feeling um, because there's not enough experience here to know what that magical thing that is missing is. Oh, my guides just said to this energy, do you want a hug? And yeah, this this aspect has said, yes, please. Oh, it's just making me feel very emotional. The, it, this, oh, it's a sense of, of needing or needing to be cherished. This aspect is hugging my guide, like really hugging. It feels very emotional. It feels like he's providing some kind of of safety net or safety blanket or security that was just not there that is just feeling like it wasn't there between these ages and there's a lot of sensitivity around the shadow aspect like it's huge in fact the crossing of the arms for me is feeling like the the crossing um of the heart chakra so that there can be some kind of defense um, against the the impact or the depth of this the this sensation, and it, it's like the only way to protect is to defend is to be very defensive maybe as well at times or, and it's quite a withdrawn energy in that it's obviously huffy it's obviously moody but there's a problem expressing why and there's a problem articulating vulnerability here or or expressing some kind of vulnerable energy within this within this space yeah my guide sitting sitting on the sofa with his arm around this aspect just giving a sense of security a sense of safety there's a strong need for safety here or a sense of feeling that things were not safe between these ages or that there was something very fundamental missing, absent. It feels to me like this energy is still searching uh, for something here. Make your dreams real, the spider. I, yeah, there's a lot of overthinking. A lot of overthinking, a lot of ties up in the head, a lot of anxiousness, like intense anxiety around this uh, this aspect. Worried, like to the point of it affecting on the physical um, and affecting the heart chakra and maybe even feeling quite cut off in a heart space within this band of existence, within this time frame. Snake, spirit, time to heal. Yeah, again, I'm feeling that to shed the skin, to allow time to heal, it's it's requiring a, a vulnerability that is not that is not coming naturally to this shadow, and, and it's not like it's not like dark shadow either. It's this is a, a frequency that is more of a confused space or more of a space that feels the need to be sort of overly defended. Um, and feels very vulnerable when exposed um, in a vulnerable sense or confronted with strong emotions. It, there's, there's a feeling of not wanting to show that or of bottling it or of hiding it or it's expressed, I want to say it's expressed in frustration is the most comfortable energy here. So the frustration associated with this kind of huffy frequency that I was feeling this it's almost moody this energy is the comfortable avenue with which to express this incredibly raw sensitivity this raw vulnerability oh this is a special aspect this aspect is so intuitive so I want to say it's like um, skinless. This is a skinless feeling. This is a feeling of being wide open to energetics around and picking up that frequency and not knowing how to defend one's energy space from like either feeling that you're picking up too much content from others 
or from the environment, especially if that environment involves conflict or absence or loss or something like that. Um, and but this this frequency is like super special. And I want to say special because the, the, there's a star child energy that's coming through with this for me. Yeah, I'm hearing the word indigo. So for me, that's there's a star child frequency coming through with this. And this is an aspect that is supposed to be seen, that is supposed to be visible, that is supposed to feel whole, that is supposed to shine. So if there is an issue here with being visible and being invisible, so usually it's the same balance, it's on the same set of scales, there, there can often be, with a, a strongly empathetic frequency, which is what I'm picking up, there is a desire to be visible, to share this energy, to share this light, to shine the light. However, if there is a period of time, especially in formative years, where there's a sense of feeling that you have to dim the light or it's, it's safer to be invisible, um, it's safer to not show vulnerability, um, there becomes a conflict in the spiritual self with visible, invisible, visible, invisible. And it's a fear of visibility for, for fear of being knocked back or injured while in a vulnerable space. And, but there's also a desire for visibility because the spiritual journey is calling, calling for a visibility here. So what's happening is an intense anxiety is created in the body. And I'm feeling this actually more in the solar plexus area, like intense, intense solar plexus. So it could have affected a digestive issues, could be coming up with this aspect. Um, and it also feels like the heart space is like so able to pick up other frequency that it, it's often safer to feel like slightly removed from that energy is what I'm getting with this. But a lot, a lot of concern or anxiety or overthinking, I mean, to the point of possible sickness here. And again, that defensive pose is kind of a not showing, not showing this energy, not showing this vulnerability, not showing this hyper, hyper, hyper sensitivity. And the, the snake spirit, this is the healing force. This is, for me, this is the energy that is wanting to kind of be allowed to come through here. It's a powerful frequency. It's a powerfully assistive frequency. It's a powerfully transformative frequency. What I want to say about this as, a, a, you know, as you are an adult now listening to this, is that if people have suddenly like exploded in your general direction or told you their life story or you were able to kind of unlock like strong emotional content in people and you think what the hell where did that come from why and it could have been at times that that was really pointed or really painful or really felt like very sudden very swift very painful it is because you carry an energy that is catalytic. I was having a discussion with somebody I had did a personal for recently about this, this exact frequency. It's a catalytic frequency, which means that you don't actually have to do or say anything, but because you hold this energy within, it's recognized by the higher self of the other person, which can flip the lid on emotional content within this person that you're dealing with and unexpectedly and it can be tears or it can be anger or it, it can be a whole variety of things is what I want to say. If you've experienced this, this is because you're not fully owning the star power. That's what I want to say here. You need to fully own this star power um, because it is your part of your calling to catalyze other people's awareness. If you're in conflict with your own visibility or your invisibility, one of the two, um, same thing, same coin, different sides, you are not going to be energetically prepared for your energy being able to have this impact because you're not taking it, 
You're not recognizing the power of that frequency. This is incredible wisdom that you carry. This is past life energetic that has been brought through. You may have had an affinity with snakes. Or there is some kind of respect for this kind of totem. Um, it's very it's very strong. It's a very strong transformational frequency. And obviously the snake sheds its skin. And you're able to get people to kind of shed areas of themselves without even doing very much, just by being in the space. Now, if you're not owning your power and therefore kind of you are still in a defensive position when it comes to feeling vulnerable. So this for me is like a stolen power frequency that may have happened between these ages, um, whereby you maybe felt just too sensitive for the world at large. I think a lot of indigo children or star family type energy feels very much like not not part of this world not part of the experience here it, it's it's it hurts it can hurt um just to observe normal human behavior so i feel like yeah this is a frequency that is asking you to step up um but it's asking you to find the safe space it's asking you to be as your higher self the spiritual nurturer because i feel like a lot of you are maybe punishing this frequency or this aspect within yourself where um you're frustrated or you it's difficult to know how to deal with the energy when you're in it that's what i'm feeling because it's coming from that space of i don't know what i what i need but what my guide is so obviously showing here is what you need to provide to yourself is real comfort, is a hug, is is that TLC frequency. Um, it's emotional. It, it's an emotional, energetic, and be beyond this kind of wall of defensiveness, there is a very sweet and vulnerable and sensitive delicacy about this frequency that is understandably uh, you know concerned about its survival or its safety in within those within that age bracket that's completely understandable because you are in a very vulnerable position but as you are now you no longer need this so try not to persecute yourself if you know that you've like reacted defensively to something or, you know, you've defended yourself before anything happens or something like that. Or you find yourself in a really kind of huffy mood or you find it difficult to break the mood that you're in or that you can get into. Try not to be hard on yourself because I feel like that's not the appropriate course of action. This, this frequency actually needs some real tenderness. Um, real tenderness and real care and real consideration. Ooh, the giraffe spirit. See the bigger picture. So this is my overview, perspective overview. So this is asking you to kind of remove yourself from the strong emotional content that you might feel in different spaces and kind of overview and recognize that you may think that is something that you're doing wrong or something that you can't understand why people respond so strongly or react so quickly or will attack um, potentially as well. Or there's this sense of something like this kind of inbuilt insecurity. Spirit wants you to see it from like, star child perspective or like literally like that higher perspective and i'm being drawn to the third eye the strong strong capability in this group like enormous um so you have a way of observing and overviewing this situation and when you see it from the perspective of it being a part of your spiritual mission to unlock these areas in people you can be in control of your space when you're doing so um, and prepared for energetic work. So if you are working energetically, prepare yourself for the onslaught potentially of somebody else's emotional content, like spilling out into your remit. It's because 
you enable catalytic movement um, in them. You you are kind of, I feel like part of your calling is to get somebody from A to B um, in terms of helping them release something, rolling the stone away. I'm hearing that, rolling the stone away so that they can kind of resurrect themselves into a new form. It's not your job to fix them. It's not your job to um take on the emotional content but i feel like a lot of you have taken on emotional content because of this empathetic nature i feel like a lot of you struggled with nurturance um it could be a parental figure like i say it could be either an overbearing parental figure or an absence um is what i'm getting uh, like a sense of it not being there like an absent parent um or somebody that took up all the energetic room. That's also something that's coming through here. But it's certainly because this is a child aspect and it's looking for reassurance and tenderness and, and, and some comfort um, from spirit. I feel like um, that is something that you're being called to do is to treat yourself very kindly. And when you get into a funk that is hard to remove yourself from, just take some time away, like remove yourself from other people because your energetic is like super sensitive to other people's auric fields. And you need to be able to kind of let go of what doesn't belong to you and recognize what does belong to you. And it could be very impacting other people's emotional content or even if you're around somebody that's having an argument or anything like that, it's, it can be very, very effective very impactful especially in the heart and solar plexus so take yourself away and maybe rewatch this because i think you need to know that um it's part of your calling also look at that visibility invisibility thing um confront the issues surrounding it because i do feel like a lot of you are being called to be very visible in the world or very much be putting yourself out there and there may be a conflict around this or insecurity around this because, again, it, it reveals, a, it, you may be thinking, I'm putting my head above the parapet, it's making me, it will make me vulnerable to be visible. And that is somehow tied to the experience in this time frame. Um, once you've confronted this, you won't feel, You'll be surprised at the amount of encouragement or support is what I'm getting. Yeah, you will open a doorway that allows spirit to flow in and support you and bring the right people to say the right th things to really encourage you to whatever it is you need to be visible about. Whether it's something you're creating or doing or it's who you are or there's that strong healing energy that's coming through with it. it it's asking you to step forward and to show yourself and to show who you are to the world and to not be afraid of doing so um, for fear of kind of being injured. Butterfly spirit, transformation is beautiful. Again, another enormously transformative card. So I do feel like you are a catalytic, cap catalytically capable of getting, getting people through very difficult spaces where it's a struggle before they recognize their own color. And that is because this is an aspect in you also that needs needs you to work on it. I feel like some of I feel like most of you've got through the cocoon energy of this and you're kind of like drying off in the sun. That's what I'm seeing, drying the wings. There's still that fragility about this energy, this delicacy, a really beautiful energy. Um, but you are considering whether it's whether you can take the step to fly and what I'm getting is, yes, you can, and you should be taking that step to fly. And I'm hearing nothing ventured, nothing gained. That's what my guide is saying. Uh, also, when it comes to expressing vulnerability, you need to be able to ask for affection or say to somebody, yeah, I could do with a hug, or actually I'm feeling really down today and I, I know what I need and what I need is like the milk of human kindness. <laughs> so my guide is asking you, to look at why it's difficult for you to tell people what you need um, because you can't expect them to be able to know what you need if what they're seeing is that it is kind of pulled back and defensive. So yeah, um, that's all I've got for you, I think, on this one. I'm just going to ask my guide if there's anything else. Yeah. 
take the jump. That's what I'm getting. Take the jump. If there's something in front of you that you're kind of, mm, nah, mm, oh, I don't know, <laughs> jump. That's what I'm hearing. Okay, so I hope that resonated. And if it did, please like, subscribe, and share. And thanks so much for following me. Hello to all my new subscribers. So lovely to have you. And welcome aboard. Take care. Bye. Hi, my darlings. This is for you that chose the pine cone here. So, yes, I'm going to be shuffling in some cards with this maybe, and we'll just see what we get with the channel. So what I'm seeing here, um, and what I'm seeing like fairly immediately here, is a not unexpected frequency, um, is what I want to say. What I'm seeing, what I'm seeing is like a bison or a buffalo, and I know that sounds strange, but bear with me. So this aspect has like walked up to the perimeter of what I would call my like mind palace area where I do my sort of visualization, visualizing, visualizing from. Um, and it's come to the edge and no further. It, it's not coming in. It's kind of like standing at the door. That's what I want to say. Standing at the door. Enormous. <laughs> it's an enormous, bold, big energy. And nothing about this energy says shadow to me. But then as I mentioned at the beginning, the shadow, what my guide wants to point out is the shadow is often aspects that we just don't recognize or don't see. So this aspect feels very noble. Um, it feels extremely heavyweight spiritually. Um, it, feels, it feels like it wants to be taken seriously in no uncertain terms. And my guide is walking up to it now and he's, he's saying... He's saying there's something that you want to say. Okay, so it's not even a question. There's something that you want to say. Would you like to say it? And this aspect is considering this. But this is what I, what I can see. This giant buffalo or bison or whatever the hell it is, is considering this. Yeah, I do have a few things to say. Okay. Okay. This aspect is kind of feeling, from the emotional level, from what I can feel, it's feeling like, it's almost feeling like this is, it doesn't feel like it's going to be heard. Um, it feels like it's going to say what it's going to say, but it doesn't expect to be heard. And it's kind of resigned to its inevitable demise. That's what I've, that's what's coming through. Let me just hit listen a little bit closer to this, excuse me. I'm being pushed off my land. I'm being minimized. All I want to do is be real, be authentic, be what I am. And yet you are minimizing me um you're not taking me seriously that's what i'm getting and oh and it feels some kind of way about this um because there is strong spiritual heavyweight lineage frequency coming through here so this is ancestral for me as well this frequency there's there's oh it's so deep and it's old deep and old here. I'm seeing it being like, you know, like it losing a habitat, so losing an environment, losing space within your space to deal with this. Like I, I'm feeling like um, it feels too big or it feels too obvious or it feels too game-changing or too serious yeah that this this frequency is taking offense at you treating it in a flippant manner or laughing at it um there's some kind of kind of what it would describe as silly <laughs> silly energy um, whereby you're kind of minimizing the quality of what it has to offer and what it's bringing through um, and it doesn't like to be treated as um, a joke. It's no joke. This energy is no joke. 
Um, it's incredibly impressive and it feels like it's a real boon. There is real like spiritual favor in this frequency for me. Yeah, it's got a lot to offer. This would be a very lucky energy is what I'm getting and a very powerful totem. Very, very powerful totem with strong ancestral root. If there is some kind of pull in a cultural sense or um, some kind of knocking at the back of your brain that says I must explore my heritage or I must get more in touch with my heritage or I must make contact with that these spaces or maybe sacred spaces or maybe sacred pilgrimages I want to say that too that has been pushed back or that there's no time for or that there's no space for in your world um, this frequency is making it abundantly clear that the more you minimize this the less available it is to you until eventually it will be diminished to the point where it's because it feels like it's further and further away. I mean, it, it's not even coming that close into my personal space. It's it's only come so far and it feels like it's made a journey. I just have to say that it feels like it's made a journey to to be here to to say these things. And it's almost like a last stand or a last ditch attempt to kind of be noticed because it's like, yeah, use it or lose it. That's what I'm saying. Um, and it's feeling like I'm hearing, don't you always, don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you got till it's gone. There is a danger of losing something profound here that is ancestrally gifted, that is um, of a lineage, um, that is... Uh, asking begging to be taken seriously that is like in incredibly sacred it's like it's like if elephants went extinct you know the the loss of that kind of consciousness to a planet would be a, such a blow and i feel like there's an area of you that is really trying to either st to stay activated because i feel like there there was abundant fields of in the past there was room here for this frequency or for this energy and now you've minimized it or pushed it out or somehow like shut it away or put it at a distance or you don't want to look at it or you don't want to see it or you and it's making itself like really obvious in this reading and i think this is why it's kind of turned up as such a large form or a large shape and not even as a, a person aspect but as a totem aspect as a like a a buffalo is what i'm getting and buffalo is very sacred to native americans and that that energy is coming through here and there's a lot of prophecy around them and again i feel this is all part and parcel of the energetic that's coming through with this and it doesn't want you to kind of laugh it off or minimize it or care about what other people think about it or, you know, go with the flow, go with the flow of, of social, social expectation um, because it, it, you lose it each time you're, you're weakening its, um, its energy. So there's something you're compromising on here or minimizing within yourself that is deeply special and very powerful and asking for more room in your life, asking that you to create space for something. So whatever this buffalo represents to you, um, you need to create space for this frequency. Otter spirit, you are never alone. Maybe some of you do need more time on your own. I, it's not usually what I pick up from this card, but that's what I am feeling here. I think maybe some of you need need to create that space where you have this strong sense of who you are, uh, a very strong energy coming through with this buffalo. And it's only one energy that I'm seeing up here. It's like a representational force. I feel like spirit is also reassuring you that you you know you're not alone in the world, and that's always what comes through with this. It, it's very heartfelt, and there is strong ancestral energy saying we're here. Acknowledge us. <laughs> it's knocking on the door. Um, it's right on the threshold. Um, don't let it. 
be turned away from don't be afraid of it either because it's a strong force this frequency it's like it's fairly intense and it, it might be mistakenly uh, you might mistakenly perceive this energy as something bad or something like that's a bad omen or that is like too big or too much or too strong or too overwhelming or too powerful it's none of that no like it's it's angry because you've placed it in the shadow realm and it deserves to be like it's a high level spiritual frequency <laughs> it's heavyweight it's a real heavyweight of a frequency lion spirit come up at the bottom again a, a big energy be generous of spirit generous you need to gift yourself or this ele element within you room in your life. You need to create space, whether that's physical space, whether that's time, whether that's attention, whether that's garnering knowledge um, or studying or um, especially culturally is what I'm feeling to say here. Uh, this, this aspect is asking for you to recognize, recognize the kingly or queenly energy in this frequency. It feels very powerful. That some of you may be um, fire signs that don't have to be, but I am picking it up for somebody. Um, yeah, it's, it, 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 it promises good things. And it may be that it's, there's some kind of nomadic quality about this as well. That, so it, it feels like a, an openness to travel or to cover a lot of ground. So this could be a, like a physical interpretation of you like wanting to explore. That's that's another possibility. And then sort of putting off, putting it off, putting it off. Um, it feels like now is the time. Um, it, it feels very timely. Yeah, I'm hearing a gong. There's something that's like now about this. <laughs> it's very, it, it's, yeah, it's impressive. It's really impressive, this frequency. And it's it's got no... It shouldn't be in the shadow. It shouldn't. Cow spirit, spirit, the miracles are endless. Yeah, there's, there's a quality here that um, could be you being stubborn. I feel that in a way that you may be putting blocks in your way that don't need to be there. Or you're halting or slowing your own progression or... There's some kind of, there is a sacred energy about this though. That's what I want to say. Because I'm seeing um, the Indian cows now. And that's a sacred force. So there's something very sacred about this feeling. And it's very abundant. The miracles are endless. It, this is a very lucky energy to have on a hand. Um, and I feel that there's a lot of love and a lot of tenderness and it may have been misrepresented or misunderstood here but this aspect is like full of love they want a healthy environment they want freedom to roam they want um they want to just be who they are in the world and that is a very visible powerful um free ranging frequency but it's very ancestral there's a very powerful lineage here very powerful snake spirit time to heal so yeah um this is a frequency that is asking for you to to help heal it because it's feeling minimized um, and so if you're complying with feeling minimized in any way, shape or form at the moment, that it's asking you to break free from this shed of skin. You are not dependent. Um, again, this, this can sometimes bring up codependency for me, this outer spirit. You are not dependent on other people's approval or other people providing you with um, the space. This is for you to kind of forge that. This is for you, this is you with yourself, right? So this is asking you to transform something and to not hold on to things that make you feel smaller than you are because there's big energy associated with you. A big and, and bold and straightforward um, is what I want to say. And it feels like very unfair 
that there's an entrapment or that there's a minimizing of the territory that um, this frequency occupies. And if you feel that's coming from an external perspective, you need to break that perspective. You need to basically tell yourself it's not. It's coming from you complying with believing that there are restrictions that you can't breach. But you are losing touch with this like this cord of ancestral energy um, is getting further away. So when you do go to grab it, it's going to be harder and harder and harder to connect in with it until eventually you might not be able to connect in with it at all. And then the gift is gone. Because when we've eradicated that, because we've deemed it inappropriate or we've deemed it, you know, not not realistic or it doesn't fit in with our day-to-day -day existence. Um, we'll do it to the point where we can lose it. I mean, yeah, that's what I'm getting. I'm getting that it's in danger of extinction. Um, I'm sorry to put it so bluntly, but that's what I'm picking up from this. And that would be a travesty, um, a real travesty. This is a force that has a lot of pride, um, but not in a bad way. Um, with that lion spirit coming through again for me. It's not a bad way. It's actually just a very, very dignified frequency. Um, it's, it refuses to be belittled, but it's being belittled. Um, is, yeah, it's being, it's being pushed out or pushed further away. Yeah, it's no joke. I keep hearing that. I'm no joke. It's not funny. So if somebody's like ridiculing you or or laughing at aspects of you that are spiritually heavyweight as well, I want to say, or ancestrally given, or that is, this frequency wants you to stand up. Stand up for it. It's asking for you to activistically stand up for it. And be like, no, it will not be taken away. It will not be destroyed. It will be taken seriously. You will take me seriously. That's what I'm getting. This is no small talent. If this is a talent that this represents, it's not small. Wolf spirit, turn knowledge into wisdom. I feel like this, this energy is asking you to be more wolf. It's asking you to be more like independently minded, um, not rely on other people's opinions uh, about this. This is something that you are needing to make a decision on for yourself. And I feel like you need to take a stand. Yeah, taking a stand. The last stand is a stand uh, where you may need to step up and you may need to articulate in the way that this energy has done in a very calm, um, very impressive manner. This is what's happening. And I'm not happy with it. And I can't stop you from doing it. But I'm not going to participate in the energy. And I will participate in the energy if you allow me room to express this frequency as it deserves to be expressed. Because it's a very... It should be given respect. I mean, enormous respect. So if you're having issues with respect or people disrespecting you... You're being asked very much to take a stand here, to stand up um, for this aspect within yourselves so that you know that, that you acknowledge it, um, which will the second you acknowledge it and publicly so is what I'm getting or or to to yourself and then to whoever you need to take a stand against or maybe it's a job or maybe whatever. Um, immediately the energy is is able to kind of portal through that's the only way i can describe it like portal in and it wow and how so because this is this is a bison or a buffalo or something like that it's not just one of them this is like a spokesperson for it's like you know an ancestor for example has stepped forward and said on behalf of our ancestry so there's a lot more like weight behind this energy there's a lot there's a number of frequencies behind this energy that are equally impressive is what i'm feeling to say so this is like representative of the power of this frequency but it's it's, it's a lot more powerful <laughs> it's like seeing spirit showing me like the tip of a humpback 
when you go whale watching you'll see like 10 percent of a humpback whale which is mind-blowing anyway i've been lucky enough to see to see that and when the tail comes out you're like holy crap <laughs> and then it goes back in and you realize you're seeing this much of the whale it's like that this is a very impressive impressive energy but beyond it it's an even bigger um even more impressive bulk of frequency that lies behind it and it'd absolutely not be minimized and absolutely not be in the shadow or, and certainly not be be placed there by external forces badger spirit be fearless and bold i love badger look at badger <laughs> nobody messes with badger Look at those eyes. Intense, right? This is the frequency that's coming through with this creature, with the, with this aspect. It's it's a very instinctual feeling um, that's coming through, and it is expressing itself as an animal, which for me indicates like the animal aspect, the the pure instinct, the pure the roaming, um, the wild frequency about this um, is is here as well. It's territory. It's about territory. Um, this energy and it's about not having that territory breached or made small or taken away or and this could be as simple as like not having enough room in your house to do what you want to do um, and feeling pushed out or feeling minimized or or you know that you can't get your own space um, I'm getting that as well or or feeling that at work or and this is saying no this is this is the line drawing the line in the sand this is the aspect that's that i'm feeling um that is coming through to this reading so i think that's all i've got for you um for this one a really impressive aspect here let it free let it roam um take down all the fences uh and stand your ground if you need to articulate something um, that is bringing up fear. Um, put yourself in the position of the buffalo because there is some kind of energy here in terms of your energy frequency in response to this. It feels like I don't want to deal with it. That's what it feels like. I don't want to deal with it. It's too stressful or it's too it's too much or I'll just laugh it off. Um, so don't do that <laughs> and be the buffalo, be the buffalo. Right. And I think that's all I've got for you, Zach, too. And if it resonated, please like, subscribe and share and drop me a comment. So lovely to have you on the channel. Mwah. Hello to those of you that chose this lovely uh, mini set of dipped candles. Lovely. Um, I kind of don't want to use them. I mean, they're so pretty. I hang them over things, mainly. Um, so, yeah. So, mainly this is channeled, but I will be shuffling in some cards as I go along. I feel... What I feel to say, like, straight at the beginning is what I do is I put myself into a location and I'm a visual person, so I visualise a lot of the channeling that I get. And I arrive to meet your aspect in this space in my mind. And what I'm actually seeing is like a parlor i'm in a kind of a waiting room a, a parlor thank you a tea please vicar it's that kind of there's a formality around this um and there is a grandfather clock i can see like a grandfather clock with a big ticking pendulum and it's that sort of frequency so i feel like this is about time this is definitely about time and it's like i can hear that like tick tick which makes time feel like even more labored so in this visualization, what I'm seeing is like, I'm supposed to be meeting your aspect and you're, and it's like 12 o'clock that your aspect's supposed to show up and your aspect hasn't shown up. And then spirit showed me like five past 12 and then half past. So that like I'm being kept waiting is almost the feeling and it's almost a sense of being kept waiting. So maybe this is like part of the shadow aspect that you're dealing with is something to do with feeling like there's a waiting um, period here. But I'm also feeling the sense of like, I don't have time. I don't have time to deal with this. I, I don't have time. Or like kind of running behind yourself and therefore like not being there when you need to be there or... 
but there's something to do with time um and it's like there's a lack of punctuality here there's a lack of sort of showing up there's a lack of um this this is an aspect that that just doesn't seem to want to show up um and that it's very strange this one like that, I, mean, I was expecting a thing <laughs> you know like an animal or a person or something a little bit easier to access than this but what i'm getting is like a the parlor it feel at the parlor feels very formal it's like really nice pieces of furniture you know the pieces of furniture that are designed to look lovely and designed to be deeply uncomfortable to sit on for more than two minutes it's that kind of feeling everything's beautifully upholstered or it like it's all there it's all set up it's all ready <laughs> it's kind of but this is kind of where you're kind of positioned in order to wait I'm waiting, I'm waiting, where, like, where is it? Where is it? it it's, it, there is a problem here with time. There is a, there is a problem. <laughs> we have a problem, Houston. There is an issue with time, is what I feel, or keeping time, or keeping track of time, or not finding time to meet with yourself. Um, that's what I'm getting, uh, you know, meet with the aspect within yourself that you need to meet with or you, you, you need to, this is almost like saying, oh, well, there's no point in me waiting around for, for this to show up. I might as well exit stage left. Um, but there's still waiting. I mean, there's, there's an unending, it's like a purgatorial feeling. That's what I'm getting. It's like an unending waiting and nothing's happening here. Um, nothing showing up um is is what i want to say and it feels like a disappointment it feels like to be a royal disappointment in this or a feeling like upset about this or a feeling like forgotten about or not important or discarded or like left to kind of just sort of fester in a middle world <laughs> in the middle realm of of sort of purgatorial parlors um it, it's very it's very odd, um, is the frequency here. Set healthy boundaries. Okay, okay. Armadillo spirit. This is about, like, say, this is about sort of saying, okay, at this point, if, uh, okay, so you arrive at somewhere and you wait and you're prepared to wait for a certain amount of time and then prepared to wait for a little bit longer. Maybe prepared to wait. At, at some stage, you say to yourself, if it hits one o'clock, I'm out of here. And I think that's fair enough. And I feel like that's what the armadillo spirit is saying to you, that there needs to be a boundary of how long you're prepared to put up with something. How long you're prepared to hang around and wait for a frequency that is not showing up. Of, of somebody who is supposed to show up or arranged to show up and it is not showing up. Maybe you're dealing with somebody like this. Maybe you're dealing with somebody who perpetually lets you down or people in general that don't show up. And and, and this is saying, no, okay, here here's where you call time. You call time on this situation because it's unendingly purgatorial to kind of sit and wait for the energy to kind of come in and meet you when it's not prepared to come in and meet you so this could very well be other people or somebody in particular that you're expecting something of and it's not happening um and it's an i don't have time thing or you are the person you can flip this energy is what i'm getting or you are the person that is constantly saying oh yeah well i'll do this and we'll meet at this point and when we and and dropping the ball and not showing up or not planning ahead or running perpetually behind yourself is what I'm getting. And, and in this case, I'm seeing spirit showing me somebody falling over their own feet, falling over like their own shoelaces, because there's, there's a sense of sort of chaotic disorganization with this. And it means that there is a window of opportunity or there's a window of time that needs to be taken advantage of that is not being taken advantage of here. And healthy boundaries need to be placed in this situation. Now, either you need to become more disciplined and you need to be really strong with yourself about this because this is an aspect that requires discipline. Um, especially if you are like constantly letting people down or feel that you're letting people down because you don't have time or you're not making time or you're not planning ahead. 
Or you're dealing with somebody like this and you need to be saying, right, okay, this is where I'm calling time on this situation and I'm going to be saying to them, if you don't turn up in the next X amount of time, I'm out. I'm done. Um, I will not be available. I will not be here. You will find an empty parlor and you can sit and wait, but you can wait forever. <laughs> That's what I'm getting. This is um, also possibly about being very honest with people about, you know, before it gets that drastic, you can, you know, message them earlier and say, okay, like, I'm giving you full warning on this, but this is the point which I bow out if you haven't done anything to rectify this situation or you haven't met me in the middle. That's what I'm getting. Meeting in the middle. Somebody has to meet in the middle here and you can't be overly, like, flexible about this. Yeah, you need to put in like a strong parameter here if you're going to be respected or taken seriously. Um, it's it's on the other person if they don't um, hold up their end of the bargain is what I'm getting or that there's some kind of, it, there needs to be some kind of cut off to this sort of unending energy um, whereby you you call time. Yeah, you call time. Because it's kind of perpetual. It, it just feels like, I mean, the clock just kind of rubs it in my face slightly because it ticks, 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 ticks. Like, just to emphasize the fact that, you know, it's a waiting room and nothing's happening. And it feels, like, boring um, and really a sort of, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a place for the energy to kind of pool is what I'm feeling. Um, I feel like... If somebody is used to you putting up with stuff, you need to start, like, you need to surprise them by not, um, is what I'm feeling, and by being very strong about that. Um, and also, but if it's you that is perpetually kind of in this sort of disorganization or not upholding your end of the bargain or kind of letting people down at the last minute or not communicating properly, because I'm feeling that I'm in this room and I'm like, nobody's communicated with me about their delay or the delay that I'm experiencing. Um, then you really need to pull your socks up is what I'm getting. You really need to start putting some boundaries in and some structure is what I'm getting, some structure into your existence. I feel like, like for some of you here, I'm feeling like um, this is something that's happened before. Um, it's not an unfamiliar energy. Um, it's something that's happened before. And they need, there needs to be some kind of formal approach maybe to this or formally agreed upon system but this aspect of yourself is is asking you to um to be patient only to a point be patient only to a point moth spirit surrender now i feel like some of you it is time to call time um i don't know why i need to say that but i feel like this surrender now always brings me kind of heartbreak, heart, heart energy. And it always feels like deep sorrow or deep grief or, you know, something that's put you in the dark night of the soul. This is a moth spirit. It's nocturnal. It, it's, it's that sense of things. And it feels like it's time to, to give up. Um, it's time to call it time. Um, and that you are not acknowledging this aspect of yourself, but while you're not acknowledging it, like you're not able to move on with the energy because you're in this perpetual kind of purgatorial parlor. Um, and that's not healthy here. I, I feel like you can't be productive from this space or you can't put your energy where it needs to go. And maybe it's work or maybe it's because I feel like there's good things up ahead, but you have to kind of release this uh, it could be a feeling that there's an opportunity that you're waiting for or you're waiting to um hear back from something from something or someone or maybe a job or anything like that um you will be i feel like if this whoever it is like makes you wait and wait and wait or whatever situation is making you feel like you need to wait um 
is wasting your time, is literally wasting it, which is why spirit is ticking this clock. It, and it's uncomfortable. It's not a com I mean, it's formal, don't get me wrong, everything looks great, but it's not a comfortable, it's a parlor, it's designed to be a place where you stay temporarily. So whatever this situation is, it's a temporary situation. And if you wanna drag it out, it's, it's nothing's gonna change is what I'm getting. It'll just be the same. Um, and I feel like this disappointment and this heartache and this feeling of like really being let down and really hoping for something to come through or, you know, a situation to come through, someone to come through, or maybe many people to come through and actually kind of, you know, make it worth your while already. It's almost like a, a feeling of not wanting to acknowledge that, you know, because you put time and energy into the investment of this, um, it's not wanting to acknowledge or admit defeat, but it, it's surrender. Surrender now. That's what um, the moth spirit is saying here. Give it over to spirit. Let spirit deal with this space. Porcupine spirit, time for beginner's mind. I feel like some of you are really needled. Some of you are feeling really needled by this. Um, and it's understandable because it's very disrespectful. And I'm getting that, that this beginner's mind is something that you need to have a fresh approach. Uh, you need to be like exiting stage left with with the proverbial spine in the air uh, or the, the flipping the flipping the spine. <laughs> I'm out of here. Um, and I'm leaving it behind. And although that the pain of this, it, it's it. It's either you've done this and it's still with you to a degree and there's an energy of still continuing to wait here or you haven't done this yet and it's going to be needling and you're going to have to confront some, I think, some frustration or anger or just um, annoyance, like real intense annoyance um, at the kind of wasted time of this frequency, we've got the elephant spirit at the bottom, learn from the past. There's that feeling of it's happened before. All of this has happened before and shall happen again. For those uh, Battlestar Galactica fans out there, <laughs> brilliant show. Anyway, sideline. Um, yeah, this is a feeling of, you know, you know that in the past, if this energy has happened, um, on a regular occurrence, maybe with the same person or maybe with the same group or maybe with the, in the same set of circumstances, that there is, that you need to take it into account that things are unlikely to change and they're not changing. And that's the thing, it's bringing a sense of inertia. It's bringing a sense of like, not really knowing what to do, like a twiddling of the thumbs or like a wasting of time or resource or energy because it's not being directed to something that you really want or you're not being able to kind of leave this situation and and take all of you with it. Like if, you, if there's any part of you that's still waiting, um, it's, it's a part of you that you need. It's an aspect of you that you need to to bring back to yourself, to gift yourself full energy of. There is some kind of ancestral flavor for me with the grandfather clock and with, with the elephant. And I feel like almost this is like a, you know, again, this is sort of strikes me as the sort of formal punctuality the, of past bygone eras that is is asking to be acknowledged as being a really valuable um, way of dealing with people and dealing with things. And, and you know, the parlour was there for, for formally greeting guests and uh, it was their space to wait while people in the house came and, and, you know, met them in the lounge or whatever. The butler would come. It feels very formal, um, this frequency. Um, and so I feel that there is this kind of energy that of quality around this. And again, with the furniture and all of that, I am feeling the quality um, that has been put into the consideration of temporarily waiting for somebody or temporarily. It's, it's very, well, it's considered, it's considered. But it's also 
not that comfortable in order to deter people you don't want to meet. This could be a ghosting situation as well as what I'm getting or feeling ghosted or um, or or being or ghosting like in some way ghosting yourself <laughs> i don't know how to put this it's a very odd one for me i might have to pause and have a think yeah this very much feels like being ghosted rather than like doing the ghosting but it's almost like you know i'm just popping out for the milk adage and then never showing back up again it's like it's like somebody's like in a coward's way out or it's just flaky this energy is really flaky. So if you are flaky, you need to sort this out um, because you will lose out on very valuable opportunities or very valuable people. And if you're dealing with flaky energy, you need to let them lose out, like on the value that is you. And if you are flaky, like you're also not valuing yourself enough to actually show up, if that makes sense. So I, I kind of feel, yeah, this is a flaky shadow. <laughs> A flaky shadow with nice parlor. Um, yeah, it's that I, I'll, I'll be back for you in a minute. Or, you know, we're, there's this expectational energy here. There's an expectational energy and that makes it worse. Because it's really like you're, you're ready. You're ready to kind of meet with or move or like... And, and yet, it has no intention of showing up. The spirit is making it abundantly clear now because it's spinning the, the clock and spinning the clock and it's showing me like night, day, night, day, night, day, night, day. It's like perpetual waiting, it is. It's a purgatorial frequency and in a really uncomfortable space. So get yourself out of whatever purgatory you feel that you're in. Um, and it can be changed. You need to walk away from something and surrender it and know that it's over. Um, is is what I'm getting despite despite the pain because it's so uncomfortable as it is it's actually causing it it's actually causing this heartbreak um, their boundaries need to protect you need them to protect the heart space you need a cutoff you need a deadline you need you need something that says like okay I've waited this amount of time or I've put up with this for this amount of time and now I'm gonna I'm going to call it. Um, and the porcupine spirit, the beginner's mind, it feels like a new start. It feels like a new beginning. It, the beginner's mind is very much the fool energy in the tarot deck. It's about taking a leap of faith in towards something new, about leaving this behind, this, this strange, like, uncomfortable formality is what I want to say about this frequency. And maybe that's the nature of the relationship that you're just, like, inquiring about or... Or there's some kind of uncomfortable formality that you feel you're already in. Maybe you're already in a situation where you feel it's uncomfortably formal. Um, that you can't ever quite feel yourself, quite feel relaxed, quite... Uh, or feel like the other person's really turning up for you or really present for you. And it may be that they're in, in, or in the vicinity, but it doesn't feel like they're, they're showing up. It... It feels like, um, and in, in waiting for this person to show up, you're not showing up for yourself or this situation or these people or, again, this is a time when maybe you need to wipe your Facebook clean. <laughs> Something like that, where you're like, yeah, you're not really a friend, bang, 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 gone, gone, gone. Um, it's been plenty of time, like, I'm done. So that could be the frequency here where you're... And I feel it will unlock, like, a pretty joyful energy, actually. A much freer energy, a much more um, social energy. Maybe you feel... There's no one else around here. It feels very kind of isolate, um, is what I want to say about this. So I'll pick one more card, and then I think we'll leave it at that. It's an odd one with Grandfather Clock. I can still hear it ticking in the back of my mind. Hopefully it's not an earworm, because that would do it. <laughs> right. Scarab Beetle. Magic works through you. I love this card. So this is saying you have the power to move this frequency. You and only you have the power to move this frequency. It's not on anyone else to move this frequency. So if you're making excuses... Um, for other people or for yourself, it's not okay. Spirit is saying, nah, mm -mm. no more excuses. 
This is your energy moving through you that you are accountable for and you are connected with. This is also my channeling card. So this is a card where you're directly capable of channeling and it's it's like a new version or new form or new level of channeling capability here with the porcupine, the newness of that beginner's mind and then the channeling of the scarab beetle. And I feel like it's really going to unlock. It's really going to unlock like an elevated feeling. I mean, it's a winged beetle. Very, very sacred to the Egyptians like very precious as a totem to the Egyptians. Again, I feel that there's this ancestral frequency here um, where you're being asked to learn from the past because I think you've been here before in some way, shape or form. But something, yeah, if you always do what, you always, what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. That is what I'm hearing. So this is time, it's time for a change, it's time for a shift. It's time to let go of something and really firm up those boundaries and really say, actually, no, I'm not going to deal with you unless you meet me in the middle. Meet me in the middle or don't bother is what I'm getting. Um, I feel like it. The, the, if this is a romantic situation for a lot of you, I think it might be. Um, I feel like there's love up ahead, but you really need to exit this like holding space, this holding pattern or waiting on somebody to change or waiting on somebody to kind of come and move you from this space to another space or or move the energy for you. Um, Spirit is saying that's not the lesson here. The lesson is to take up that energy in that magical sense and draw it elsewhere, move it elsewhere um and chalk it up to experience and try and i know it's hard when you're dealing with a very a sort of heartfelt frequency but it's actually worse for you to stay in this space than it is if you just change something or exited or yeah went elsewhere or went home <laughs> that kind of thing <laughs> I feel like you are the one that's showing up in the middle. You're the one that's like prepared to meet in the middle and that's not the energy that's coming back at you. And if that's how you feel, then it's time to retract your frequency here. Anyway, that's all I've got for you. And if it resonated, I really, if you know, <laughs> I've lost the ability to speak. I really hope it resonated is what I'm trying to say. And if it did, please like, subscribe, share, drop me a comment. And it's so lovely to connect with you and I'll see you soon. Bye. Hi there to those of you that chose the bell. Oh, so loud. So loud. Um, right. So straight away, what I'm getting is a very... Uh, it's a very intense frequency, this. Um, it feels, so Spirit is giving it to me in the form of a wolf. Um, and this wolf is very dangerous, is what I wanna say. I'm, I'm talking, I'm seeing like, sn like snarling, s snapping teeth, kind of genuine, genuine jeopardy. Um, energetic is coming through here. It feels very raw. It feels um, very traumatic um, and I don't know whether you've had a traumatic experience or there's been some kind of, hello Berlin, there's been some kind of a raw um, event that has occurred. Um, some of you could have had a brush with death is what I'm getting here. Um, others of you, I feel like you've dealt with a very, um, dangerous energy uh, or come close to a dangerous energy or felt in, in real jeopardy and this could be childhood related as well as what I'm getting but the uh, the memory of this is something that has uh, has definitely embedded itself here um, it's a strong reflex reaction um, dealing in this particular shadow zone and I want to say flight the, the fleeing, uh, uh, some, the fleeing something, because what I'm seeing is like somebody running away from this energy and like having to kind of shimmy up a tree. And then I'm, I'm viewing, I'm viewing from the top of the tree and viewing down on this frequency. 
This is um, an energy that feels genuinely... It makes you feel like genuinely you're in jeopardy or genuinely there is some kind of vulnerability around your position or vulnerability. Um, yeah, this it, this is an, a frequency that you have encountered is what I want to say and that really meant business. Um, I don't feel like the wolf is an aspect of you. I do feel like the ghost of this energy is something that is haunting, uh, something that has become like a shadow aspect or that is traumatic and therefore you don't want to look at it. Um, what else am I feeling about this frequency? If, yeah, there's, it feels terrifying, to be completely honest. It feels... Um, really like oh my god that was so close i feel like my heart is pounding maybe you get heart palpitations or there is this kind of panic um that can come in here um that can relate to this uh, emotional zone is what i want to say this this sense of feeling oh, it, it's close to danger or close to somebody who could be suddenly aggressive is what I'm feeling here too. Maybe there's physical, there could well be like f previous physical injury or physical abuse or suddenly lashing out or um, feeling weak, feeling vulnerable, feeling that you have to, that you've got no option but to peg it. And against this energy, there is no option but to flee. Um, that's the sensible thing to do. And so I feel like you're dealing with something that ha that has happened, that is in the past, that was sensible to evade or to do your best to evade. But there's a shadow of evading um, is what is going on here. So let me just go into this. Yeah, this is not an easy energy to contain. It's an energy that, like, it feels, like, mentally overwhelming or it, it, the shadow of this energy feels, like, oppressive. It feels, like, over the top of my head and pressing down, like a pressure it is what's going on here. It feels very dark. It feels very dark. It feels like like an energy that wanted to tower or is towering over in order to intimidate, in order to control, in order to keep you trapped or encaged or like stuck up a tree or, uh, you know, unable to, to get to what you need to get to or to a place that feels like safe harbor or it, it's, it keeps you in a state of agitation in a state of like high alert is also what I want to say this feels very much to me like possible post-traumatic stress disorder uh, panic attacks it feels very much um, like like there has maybe been a health issue or an accident or a trauma or an event um, that has left you with this imprint Nothing is wasted, vulture spirit. That's interesting. Yeah, th this experience I feel made you feel stripped bare is what I'm what I'm feeling to say. Um, really feel broken. I mean, there could have even been broken limbs here. I am seeing bones with the vulture spirit. So again, it feels like it has a physical or bodily impact. And again, if that's not just anxiety, like it could have been an actual physical impact that's occurred here, or at least dealing with somebody who is physical or overtly physical or very scary. I mean, vultures aren't overly approachable, are they? Look at it. I mean, apart from the fact they come up to your freaking knees, I imagine, like they are, they're not a kind of, oh, cute bird kind of frequency. This is a predator. And that's the frequency that's coming forward with the wolf. It's the, there's a strong predatory energy. I feel that was 
fixed or focused on you in the past and who caused either caused an injury but I feel like you kind of evaded um, this energy to a large degree but the trauma of like even a brush with this frequency is not fun and it's left you in a state of I feel like you're still reeling or that there's a shadow of panic there's a shadow of being on alert are being like hyper cautious hyper aware okay so how do we deal with this crow so i'm getting my guide to come into this one because i really don't know like what he's gonna do here oh wow he's enclosed this frequency with a cage he's he's caged this frequency and this frequency is huge. It's huge within this cage. Like it's a month, like a monster wolf. I mean, this is like Norse mythology level, like monster wolf that's taking up nearly the whole cage. And he's saying to this frequency, if you want to continue existing, then you need to minimize yourself so that you've got more room to move because what I'm seeing here is that this wolf could shrink like Alice in Wonderland this wolf could get smaller within this cage and therefore it gives itself more room I'm hearing the word exorcising so I feel like for some of you who are involved in magic or shamanism there needs to be an exorcising of this energy um, especially if it's still looming over you in some way, shape or form. There is a definite oppression, uh, that pressure energy, um, and, and it's affecting uh, the, the, the final chakra. Um, yeah, this, this is, and it's, that's, that's a health energy here, and that's going to feel like carrying around a burden or not feeling that you can stand tall or feeling a bit weak or feeling a bit vulnerable or feeling a bit easily knocked. I mean, energetically, I feel like this is an energy that's kind of bleeding you dry a little bit. And this could be, this could, this could also indicate like health issues to do with exhaustion um, or to do with feeling burnout. Um, yeah, okay, my guide is saying, this is less of a shadow and more of an entity. So whatever this is, it needs, you need protection from it. So you need spirit to deal with it and cage it. Like spirit, like my guide's just shown him, he's, he's just caged it. And funnily enough, it, the cage is made of bones, which is very bizarre, but that's what I'm seeing. Um, and He's giving it options. He's basically saying you can reduce yourself and then, you know, I might consider you letting you free somewhere else or I will literally extinguish your energy from this space um, because it's not okay that it's oppressive. It's not okay that it's causing. Um, so if you feel like you're, you've had something set against you or you've had a trauma in the past, there is a shadow of this trauma that is feeling almost like something that needs to be exorcised. Would you just decide, Pussycat, where you wanna be? Always has to be involved, right. Yeah, nothing is wasted. This is a valuable experience, Spirit wants to say here. It's, it's something that you that is designed to improve your magical capability so what i want to say here is that you're not looking at your magic you're not looking at the power which you hold and he's handing me a wand now you this is the magician pack pile group this you are the the magic workers this is something that needs to be dealt with magically or dealt with um in a in a kind of yeah, in a spiritual sense. You're going to pick the card, Merlin. Is that what you want to do? <laughs> Cat spirit. <laughs> Claim your independence. Yeah, I feel like this energy is really overwhelming your sense of capability. 
um, your sense of, um, and maybe it has in the past as well. This doesn't have to be current energy, but if it it's residual, if it's not current, there's a residual energy here. Um, I feel like the stronger that you can be within yourself, the less that this energy has any capability. I mean, it has no capability. That's what that's what my guide is saying. He's like, you know, you you can put this in a cage. You can get rid of this energy. You can send it packing. Um, it's it, you can do this um, and claim that capability. Claim your wand. That's what I'm seeing. Claim your wand. It's yours by right. Yeah. Yeah, it's yours by right. It, like, it may have sent you low, but there's a survival um, energy about this. And at the back sphere is at the bottom, and it says resurrection. Uh, sorry, a rebirth is assured. So if things feel dark at the moment, or if things feel like a sort of suspended, you are being assured of a win here, is what I'm getting. You're, But you're being asked to look at things from a different perspective. Because this whole process is, is trying to get you not to try not to try and make you feel weak or um, targeted or belittled or victimized is what I'm getting. But but to show you your magical power, that's what I feel that this this experience is almost like a gift to show you your magical power. And it's as simple as imagining spirit caging caging this frequency uh, or you doing it yourself i mean my guide is saying it doesn't matter you or your spirit team or it doesn't matter like this is magical and it can be turned around in a magical way and i feel like it's long overdue actually is what i'm getting with this it feels like embedded in the past uh it feels like somebody acted in this wolf space or may they maybe embodied that energy of the wolf but the energy is spirit is asking you to perceive it just as an energetic that exists in the world and with some energetics you've just got to boot them out the door and tell them to get get going <laughs> she says diplomatically you know what i mean bugger off to this energy and that it's asking you to do that. It's asking you to step into the power that you have. Oh my gosh, he's throwing a cloak around you now. I mean, this is witchy, magical, shamanistic stuff going on up here. So in whatever way you practice that, whether it's um, whether it's spell work or whether it's um, visualization or whether it's um, just doing just imagining it or or tackling it in some way maybe you need to talk about this he's saying for some you might need to talk about this and therefore you need to like seek out counsel or seek out some kind of professional somebody who would just sit and listen it could even be a friend to talk about the fear because it's the fear that is the enemy here yeah this wolf is vanquished when you are no longer afraid of it. That, that's the key here. When you're no longer afraid to confront it, it's vanquished. It's hard. I know it's hard when, when you've had a trauma, especially if it's on a physical level, there is a knee-jerk reaction. It's that fight, flight, flee response. I've said flee twice, but anyway freeze that was the other one i was thinking of this is sort of flee and then freeze <laughs> or freeze and flee that yeah this this is not a fight to response i mean you know you'd come a cropper um against this energy so whatever this situation was you didn't have an option to kind of stand up or fight or if you did you were hurt or injured um and it felt very dangerous or felt very scary very intimidating it's a very intimidating frequency and there's something yeah i don't know what the motivation of this animal is it, it almost just does want to devour you or devour the energy or it wants it wants to make you this frequency wants to make you feel powerless to change things powerless or that you don't have a voice or that you don't have the means or the ingenuity to to escape or be gone or survive 
Um, and it could be something that you've carried through from a past life. That could be something here. Um, yeah, I'm feeling that for some of you, actually, that it's something that you've chosen to confront in this lifetime. Um, that's kind of a throwback. Or it could be a person that you've dealt with, uh, possibly when you were younger. Um, or a traumatic experience, an accident, a sudden event that I'm feeling breathless, that winded you. Like, you know, when somebody punches you in the gut, it's like, <gasps> you can't breathe. It's that feeling. See the big picture, the giraffe spirit. Yeah, they want you to be taller. So at the moment, there's like this oppressive energy over the top, kind of like a dome. And what I'm seeing is that this there's this kind of then cage that is in also the shape of a dome is the way I'm seeing it, that this animal's in. And, and spirit wants you to like stand on top of it and look down. So instead of like feeling that it's above you, flip the energy and look down upon it. That's what I'm getting. So that, that you are the one spreading the energy over this frequency and containing it and saying, you know, you've got no right to be here anymore. You know, thanks for the lessons and all, but you can bugger off now. That's what I'm getting. Because this is causing obstacles. Um, some of you it's causing phobias. Some of you is there's a sense of like panic um, as well here. There's maybe sleep problems or health issues. Again, it's stealing energy um, with all of that frequency of like... <gasps> fluctuation or fear or trembling or yeah any of those energies is what's coming through it's asking you to dominate this energy um enough to kick it out time to let go groundhog spirit I feel like for some of you this is actually releasing an emotional content and actually crying or Reveal, yeah, this is like communicating the trauma um, is what I'm feeling. And letting go of that, letting go of the burden of it, letting go on what's happened in the past. So it's time to let this aspect free, to minimize it and then make sure that you know you you visualize it disappearing over the horizon to the teeny tiniest little speck and if you can still see it like make sure it goes over the hill and every time you see it in your mind again create that distance see the bigger picture create create a distance where you put it further and further and further away from you you know, if you want to envisage picking it up and chucking it and like onto a different solar system, but by all means do that as well. But in some way, shape or form, you're being asked to purge, exorcise, get rid of, boot out a very powerful predatory energy that has caused you real issue in the past, real pain, real pain um, that has made you feel stripped bare that has possibly affected you on a physical level um, and you're being asked now I feel like you're stepping into a more powerful space so you're being asked now to confront this um, directly and it could it could mean various things to various people this this energetic this wolf but it ain't it ain't friendly just saying it's not friendly buffalo spirit the abundant universe will provide. I'm really liking this. This feels like the power of spirit saying, you know, you are messing with the wrong witch or, or wizard or warlock or magician or whatever or shaman. You are messing in the wrong shamanic zone here. Look at the wonderful markings and the feathers coming out from the ear as well. For me, this is like, you tapping into uh, an heritage of magic or a heritage of capability um, that you have not allowed to be large enough. Um, and what this is doing is confronting you um, with your own power. And in doing so, you're able to use this 
allyship is what I want to say to confront this wolf-like force and say, okay, you are a stream of consciousness that I do not require anywhere near me. Thank you very much. Um, and if you do persist in coming near me, my spirit team will extinguish you. So it's your choice. Do you want to survive or, you know, and bugger off? Or do you want to stick around and be exterminated? That is what I'm getting from this. There, there's like a very uncompromising energy that goes with Buffalo Spirit for me. And that is, that's what this is feeling like. Like spirit going, we are bloody minded about this. And it, that it, this is not one step further is what I'm getting. Not one step further to this, to this overwhelming force. And spirit wants to say to you, you are never alone. They have your back. That's what I'm getting. We've got your back. And, you know, we had your back then and we have your back now. And the, the reason why you're still standing, still have evaded this frequency, still got through this energy, still, um, you know, battered, bruised and traumatized, maybe, but survived, you survived. And that is because this is your spiritual camp right there. And the tenderness and the love that is coming through from spirit to you is enormous. And this is also about protecting your heart space and telling you that you are not alone. You have a strong spirit team up here. This is a strong ancestral frequency. But whatever this is, you need to let go of it because it's done harm. It's done damage. And engaging with it... Um, engaging with this frequency or allowing it into your remit, allowing it into your world will cause destruction and it will cause great injury is what I'm getting. So there's a strong warning with this one. There's a strong sort of heads up. This is time to deal now, time to deal. Okay, I really hope that resonated. And if it did, please like, subscribe and share. And thanks so much. Um, drop me a comment. Let me know how you're going and what that meant to you. Thank you. Bye, guys.